Just witness three guys walk into Chipotle with a homeless man, buy him a burrito, and sit and talk with him for a solid 20 minutes while he ate what are some random acts of kindness that you've witnessed? There's a five guys where I live, and across the street, a Walmart. Behind the Walmart there is a fairly large homeless community living in the woods where the landowner gave permission of sorts. One day I was walking out of FG with my ex-girlfriend and a homeless man approached me asking for money. I denied but offered to buy him some food, he happily obliged and that's how I knew he wasn't just asking for drug money. Angel walked on crutches and a worn out cast that needed to be taken off and his chocolate lab carried some of his goods. He ended up telling me his life story and about how his wife died in a car accident and the dog that was with him that day sat by his wife's side as she died. Completely random homeless dog found the car crash before anyone else. The dog stayed with him ever since, following him through depression, job loss, and eventually homelessness. All of this peppered with messages of God. I had a $75 gift card to FG, some of it just used. And I bought the man a burger for himself and his friend back at the camp. I told my ex to wait in the car and follow if needed as I walked around the corner to PetSmart with the man and bought his dog the biggest bag of food I could find. The employee saw what I was doing and gave it to him for free. Angel would not stop thanking me and to my ex's dismay I offered him a ride home as she arrived. He denied with a laugh saying that he doesn't get into strangers cars. We fed the dog and Angel split the food into packs so he and the dog could carry it. I gave him the rest of the gift card and told him that I would make sure he would always be fed if he needed it. He was a holy man through this entire experience and he gave his word. I opened a tab at 5 guys with the manager and asked him to help the man anytime he came in, as to not hassle customers anymore. Win win for the store. Every month I go in and pay, each time no more than a few burgers taken off, with the exact toppings Angel got that first day I met him. I haven't had the chance to meet Angel again. But every time he picks up his food he leaves a napkin with God bless you written on it. I am not a religious man but I take the message to heart. That is the kindest thing I have ever done and I hope I made a difference in his life for whatever reason. And it turns out, PetSmart feeds his dog regularly now as well. I'll never forget Angel and his dog, Ryder. You're a dang good person. Kind of related. I was walking through Midtown about a year ago and I always pass the same guy on 48th and 6th begging for money. Sometimes I just throw him a $1 or two. One day, I was standing near him, on my phone, talking to my secretary when she asked if I had eaten lunch. I'm usually so wrapped up in work that I forget. I told her no, I don't have time to eat. I've got to go meet with a client, then hung up. The homeless guy said I wish I had that problem. At that moment, life snapped into perspective for me. I asked the guy when the last time he had a good meal and he told me someone had given him a breakfast burrito from MCDs. I felt like absolute crap that I was part of a society where we as a society had lost the concept of helping those in need. It was weird, I just had gotten schooled by a homeless guy and kind of liked it. I took him to a restaurant I frequent called Papillon. Since the place knew me, they had absolutely no problem with us being there and comped the meal. I gave him one of my business cards and told him, if he's ever really hungry, call the 800 number, and my secretary or I would help him out. A girl I was seeing at the time worked in a psych lab at college and told me never to give homeless folks money since they most likely will go spend it on drugs. Rather buy them a meal instead. Since then I've bought him a few meals but due to my traveling for work, I haven't seen him in a long while. Jay is war vet and after being in Vietnam and killing people, found he couldn't function in society. He ended up homeless after he slipped into drug use to forget what he had done. For some reason, that one sentence from him still resonates with me. Really really sad that this is the price to pay for freedom. Freedom for one is heck for another. One afternoon in mid-December I went into a cafe at the coast for a late lunch. An elderly couple came in, clearly regulars. The hostess greeted them by name and sat them at their usual table. After a while, a waitress came out and went over to talk to them. She said, last time you said that you wouldn't be able to get a tree this year, so we got you a little something. She and another girl then brought out a tabletop tree already decorated with ornaments. Made me cry. 
This past summer at Jamba Juice, it's a smoothie place for those of you who don't know. Where I work at, I was working register when one of our regular customers came in. His name was Harvel and we always greeted him when he came in. This day was just a normal day like any other. He came in, ordered as usual, then left with a smile on his face. About 5 minutes later he walks back in. This surprised me and I thought that maybe he wanted his smoothie remade or something. As he got closer to the register, I noticed that he had a homeless man waking behind him. He then proceeded to tell the man to pick whatever he wanted to eat and drink. The man got a soda and a sandwich. To see the smile on that man's face when I gave him his food really made me smile. Last Monday in Amsterdam, there was a homeless man selling homeless papers for 50 cents. If they sell a paper, they have 50 cents to sleep in the homeless shelter. I bought one from him, but the rest of the people ignored him or called him names. A few minutes later 5 yuppies walked by and the homeless man greeted them and offered them a newspaper. I thought to myself I am completely sure they're going to say they have no money but I was completely wrong. They gave the man a 10 euro billjet, lied that they found it on the ground and didn't want a newspaper in return. The homeless man literally cried of happiness. That really made my week. The interjected Dutch here and there made this so great. Het hound rent. I'm still learning. During Christmas holidays, my parents and I dined in an Italian restaurant downtown. As we were all enjoying our food, across from our table to the other side of the room, I saw a mother and daughter who were dressed quite well dining with a homeless man dressed in rags and pieces of clothing. There are quite a number of homeless people populated in our downtown area, you could totally see that they came from two different places in life. They sat there and ate, talked, and laughed as if they were family. It was a beautiful sight to see. As they had finished their food, the mother ordered a full to-go plate for the man. My family and I had left before they did, but seeing that, I believed I had truly witnessed what the Christmas spirit is all about. To the bottom of the pile I suppose, but here goes. A couple of years ago, my girlfriend, at the time, and I were leaving a bar one cold as crap winter night, had been out with friends for a birthday I think and had gotten pretty smashed. We were only parked a block or two away, but it was freezing out and the wind chill factor was something fierce. As we approached the parking lot where we had parked, I noticed an old frail looking man sitting on a bench in front of the grocery store huddled up, visibly frozen, slowly munching on a loaf of bread one slice at a time. It was heartbreaking because he was obviously underdressed and homeless. I on the other hand was fully clothed, hammered and still freezing. As my girlfriend went to grab the car, I approached the man to see if he was okay and needed anything. He simply replied, in a quiet and meager voice, no I'm okay thanks not once making eye contact. Obviously embarrassed he didn't seem too keen on making himself a bother. It was clear he was not okay and was cold as crap and hungry. So I ran across the street to the pizza place, ordered a large pizza, some drinks, waited for the order and made my way back. I handed him the pizza and I'll never forget the look on his face. Obviously shocked that anyone even gave a crap about him, or his predicament. His eyes welled up and placed the hot as balls pizza on his lap for immediate warmth. He seemed embarrassed, but at the same time was grateful. Not saying a word I just sat with him as he slowly opened the box and grabbed a slice. We chatted, about nothing in particular. Just enough to show this poor old guy that he hadn't been forgotten or passed by due to his misfortunes in life. After 2-3 pieces, I asked him where he was staying, and he said here and there. I offered to take him down the street to a motel for the night where we would drop him off and take care of the room for him. He replied no thank you son, you have done enough. I have been through this before and will be just fine. After several attempts of trying to change his mind, it was obvious he wasn't going anywhere so I simply put out my hand, shook his, wished him the best, and was on my way. As I walked to the car, I could hear him sob in the background as I walked away, which in turn made me tear up a bit. I will never forget that profound effect that man had on me, and often think about how he made out that winter and what he may be up to today. Never got his story, as he wasn't keen on sharing, but he was a really nice guy who was in a terrible situation. Something as simple as a hot meal, or a conversation with someone who is down in the dumps, resonates with them more than you could ever imagine. They never saw him again, but I do think about him from time to time. So humble and kind. Even when the world simply passes him by. 
WHO the frick is peeling onions in the school library. Bit of a story but not a huge one that ended in a way that made me a little sad. My partner and I were walking through a London bridge station, and we saw a young girl, perhaps 18 or 19, sat with a cat on her lap. She was emaciated, had spots from H all over her face. The cat was thin but looked well brushed. She was just sat there, a cup with coins in her hands, tear marks on her cheeks. I gave her a pound and we walked on. My partner and I have both been homeless in both the recent and far past, and we have both had issues with drugs. We got up to the platform having not said a word to each other since we'd seen her. I turned to look at him, and said something along the lines of that was horrible and he knew what I meant. I then snapped, couldn't stop thinking about her, and turned on my heel and walked back to where she was sitting. I had worked that day so I had some cash in my purse. Got 20 pounds out and gave it to her. She looked at the note for about 5 seconds so I just put it in her cup. At that moment my partner came up behind me with the Sainsbury's bag we had got doing groceries on our way. And took out a carton of juice and a couple of cereal bars. Gave them to her. We just left. I said good luck. As we went. And she was sat there with her mouth open before holding her cat as close as she could. Kissing it over and over again and saying thank you. Thank you frantically, clearly torn between getting up and embracing her cat. We left. A few days later, I was in the station on my own and happened to see her again. I didn't stop, had no money or food or anything to give her, but we made eye contact. I smiled. When she realized I wasn't going to give her anything, she looked away. From the look on her face, I'm guessing she didn't recognize me. I don't want to know where the money went. I'm just glad she had some food. Have started carrying about some cat food whenever I know I'm going to be in London Bridge. Bit sad, but she touched me. I'm just a sucker. To be honest, I've taken homeless people I met on the street or in a station home with me to give them a bath and a meal. Always made sure my neighbors knew what was going on. But it was risky. I still have the wallet a homeless man left under my table by accident because there was nothing in it that identified him. I look at it every so often and half smile, half want to cry. I was confused by you feeding homeless people cat food, then I understood. When I was younger, I got a call while out in town that my dad had been injured while working. He's a firearms police officer, so whenever I heard things like injured I assumed the worst. I burst into tears and my mum takes me out the shop, and talks to me. After a few minutes a large black woman walks over, and in very broken English says I saw you upset, and I did not like it, here, and hands me a chocolate bar. I said thanks, but I was pretty surprised. This will probably be buried. This actually happened to me years ago in Colorado. I was pretty broke at the time, and I was going into Walmart to get some basic groceries for myself. As I'm walking in, a homeless guy who was camped out near the entrance approached me and asked if I could buy him a jacket. I had never had someone make a specific request like that, so I said, if I have enough money I will. He then proceeded to tell me it needed to be waterproof and he liked the ones in the hunting department. I was a little WTF at this point. I go in. And I'm literally combing through the jackets and trying to find one I can get for the guy. It was pretty cold outside. I literally don't have enough money for it. So I got get my groceries. And then stop at the McDonald's in the store and get a bag full of food for the guy. I head out. And I explain that I didn't have enough for his jacket. And offered him the food. He turned it down and got pee at me. My jaw dropped at this point. I was kind of at a loss. I felt like a complete butthole. I almost tossed the food, but I remembered there was another homeless guy who was usually close to the entrance to the parking lot. I reparked my car and walked up to the guy, opposite direction that he was begging. He was in a wheelchair and was a paraplegic. I offered him the food, and he looked totally surprised and grateful. He thanked me and tucked himself away from the cars to eat. Made it all worth it that he didn't directly ask me for anything, and that I could kind of help him out. Good for you mate. You didn't let yourself lose faith in humanity because of one a pity stupid person. Was at Disneyland, in line for the churro cart. This father was in line with his kid buying churros and drinks. He orders a coke for his wife and daughter, who were holding spots for fireworks, and three churros. The kid wanted a sprite so his dad orders sprite. It was like $15. 
The guy pulls his wallet and had like $12. He bends down and tells his kid. I am really sorry son. Daddy is out of money. We don't have enough money to buy the sprite. Daddy will make it up to you. The kid starts crying and his dad didn't know what else to do. At this point, the cashier told him. Take the sprite. It's on Mickey. The father just started tearing up a bit and gives the kid a sprite and the kid's all happy again. The father thank the cashier over and over again as they prep the churro for him. It put a tear in my eye too. I just got back from Disneyland. Disneyland pays nothing for the coke. Plus Disneyland is a place where happiness is absolute. I love how everyone who works there is trained to make sure not even a hiccup or speed bump is in your path to happiness. They don't care what it takes. It's not like they need the money either. Totally awesome. This is why I keep coming back. I have two short stories to share. Years ago, my mother was driving home in a rainstorm and came across a woman in a suit and heels walking along the side of the road. My mother stopped the car and offered her a ride. Turns out the woman's car had broken down and she needed to get to her payphone. This was before the time of cell phones. Imagine that. A few weeks later mom had taken my siblings and I with her to run some errands. She had stopped at the bank on the way to cash a check, and after shopping stopped at a snow cone stand to get us treats. The guy running the cart had already made the snow cones, and my mom goes to pay, and realizes she has no money. The bank teller had forgotten to give her the cash. Anyone who's ever been in a car with four children can understand being in a hurry and not noticing this. A man standing behind us offered to pay. To this day my mom attributes this to her good Samaritan act. A few years ago at my job as a receptionist in an ophthalmologist's office, a patient came in for vision loss. He had no insurance, and the practice his office policy dictated that you have to pay at least half of your bill up front to be seen if you don't have insurance, due to problems with patients to come in and never pay. This man kept telling the woman who was checking him in at the front window that he needed to be seen. He wasn't able to come back, but he had no money, and she kept trying to tell him that she was sorry, but we couldn't see him without any kind of payment. A woman who was waiting for an appointment then came up to the window and paid the half of the visit price so he could be seen. Another patient, on his way out from his appointment, when stopping at my window paid the rest of the man's visit so he wouldn't have a bill. In Cambodia, I gave a plate of fruit to a little girl on the street. She ran off with and went to share it with three other kids. When she returned the plate, she had left a single piece of fruit on the plate. It is considered rude there to empty your plate since it means you haven't had enough. Made my eyes watery. I didn't witness it but I actually have done the same exact thing. I used to see a homeless man behind my work every day. Eventually became friendly and would watch my car and keep people from breaking into it. I eventually asked him if he wanted to get some lunch and it became a regular thing about once a week. Super nice guy. Just had a tough life. I'm late to the party but I have to tell this story. I was in Cape Town, South Africa for the World Cup and everything happens on Long Street. All the bars, all the parties, but also all the beggars. After a certain point you just learn to tune them out. So one night I am walking down and this kid comes up to me and says, Can I please just get some milk? Most people grab at you, ask for money, pop, etc. Nobody has ever asked for milk. This kid could not have been over 8 years old, at 2 in the morning, asking for milk. We were right by a shop so I take him in and get him milk, cereal, some fruit, and some candies. Kid is in shock, says thank you over and over again. Couple nights later, I see the same kid, he had waited where he met me a few nights before, runs up and gives me this huge hug, just says thank you thank you. Well we are practically best friends now so we go over and get a hot dog together and we start talking. A kid ends up inviting me to his house the next night so his mom could say thanks. In hindsight this was a horrible idea as I could have gotten killed. But I agreed. So the next day I meet the kid in the same place and we go back to his house in the absolute hood of Cape Town. And I meet his mom and younger brother and have a horrible dinner that she took so much pride in preparing. And just talked for hours. Gave them like $100 bucks and wished them luck. Kid really opened my eyes and humbled me. Great experience. 
I saw some lady who was obviously low income but tried to at least dress neat and clean was getting some gas a couple of years ago. She was holding her son and she grabbed like a half gallon of milk and a couple of those little dinty more individual beef stew cups, so it looked like that was her dinner. The total for it and the gas was like $23 xx but she only had $21 xx. She told the cashier she'd be right back and would see if she had some change in her car. She was driving a beat up thing, and I saw that she was trying to count pennies, so I paid for everything gas included, for her while she was outside and just left. I didn't want to thank you or anything. Truthfully, I was trying to get back to my apartment so I could get back to WoW and I didn't want to wait for her. So I just paid for everything plus my stuff, so I could just get out of the station faster. Is that kind enough? I bought a homeless mom and her two kids dinner at a Taco Bell. They said it was the fanciest thing they've eaten in two years, and she called it a buffet. We talked for quite a bit, and I bought her a few more things to last her for another day. I never give cash to folks begging for money, but if they say they are hungry or need a train ticket, and I feel generous and have time, I'll go and put what they need for them. Most beggars are liars. The ones in actual need get help in this way. The ones faking it get confused and walk away. Yesterday a young guy approached me and said he was needing some money for food. I told him I am homeless too, which I am. After walking away, I realized that I had two sandwiches in my backpack. I went back to him and asked if he wanted a sandwich. He wouldn't take it. AI tried twice. Minneapolis feeds its homeless very well. If anyone is on the streets for more than a day, they know where the food kitchens are. He seemed to be in a daze and may have been wanting a fix. I have flew a sign a few times for money. It's usually to purchase coffee, so that I have access to the internet and a very clean restroom in the mornings. I go to the library after 10am. Sometimes the money is used to pay my storage rental of $57. In Minnesota, the homeless receive $203 cash if they can't work for mental physical reasons until they get SSI or SSDI. I have PTSD which affects me. I gave up working in May due to a personality conflict with a co-owner. I am happier now with nothing than when I was then working in that toxic environment. Most homeless are out of work for various reasons. Very few people choose to be homeless because they are lazy. Especially in Minnesota with its unkind weather from October. April. It's a difficult city to be on the streets, but has many shelters and food kitchens. The city is well networked and allows the homeless to stay warm in skyways and the library. One of the biggest downsides to being homeless is to find a safe place to nap indoors. Nearly impossible unless you go to the drop-in center and try to nap at a table while so many people are talking and being sick while homeless. I've been sick for nearly two months of the five months I've been homeless. It costs the government more money for a person to be on the streets than to give them adequate shelter. Nearly 30% more. So, we have a mentally disabled guy who works in our dining hall and he's very friendly, but no one really engages him in conversation. One day he makes a comment to this huge black football player, and I expect him to get blown off. Nope. The football guy sits down with him and they talk for about an hour. The mentally impaired guy looked so incredibly happy to be having a real conversation. It was amazing. Now I try to talk to him every time I see him. One of our sheriff's deputies was called to a convenience store for a reported shoplifting. When he arrived he found a young man with a pack of bologna and cheese in his coat pockets and a young wife and small child wailing in the beater car out front. Deputy took the report, cuffed the young man and asked the wife to follow them to jail. Instead of going to jail, he took them to a grocery store and bought them some food from his own pocket. I saw a mate call and pay for a cab. For a random guy who'd had too much to drink last Saturday night. He was not in a good way outside a nightclub. He stood with him, waiting for the cab, and proceeded to hand the driver $50 to get the guy home. Not a huge sum by any means, but for a complete stranger. There was a time, during high school, I took the train from Minneapolis, MN to Spokane, WA. While riding on the train, I had noticed a man sitting by himself. 
looking homeless. Fast forward a few hours, and I'm getting hungry. I head to the dining car and proceed to look at the menu. A couple of minutes later, the guy from before came and sat down at my table. He struck up a conversation along the lines of how he had ridden trains all his life, but he's never been a passenger. He explained that he was going to his daughter's wedding, and she had paid for his ticket. He's been all over the country many times and knows people who've lost feet. I was fascinated and bought him dinner. He sat next to me later and we just talked. Very nice of you. This reminds of a time I was walking downtown Toronto, and passed by a man who was clearly homeless, sitting on a bench. As I was passing the homeless man, I noticed another guy coming out of a pizza joint with a slice of pizza and a pop for himself, and he had another one for the homeless man. He didn't just hand it to him, but he gave it to him and sat down with him, and just started talking with him like a friend. One of the kindest acts I have seen. I was on a school trip, and we stopped at a small town to eat lunch. We had these packed lunches that included two sandwiches, an apple, and a juice box. Next to where most of us had sat down, there was an old homeless lady. She was sitting on the side of the street begging for food and money. At one point, this one girl decided that she wasn't going to eat her lunch, so she went to throw it in the bin right next to this old woman. But, on second thought, she just gave it to the homeless women. The women was full of joy, thanking the girl and everything, and then, suddenly, this other guy decided to also give his one to the homeless lady, cue almost everyone giving her their lunches. At this point a woman was tearing up with thanks, and she quickly got up, and left. After that we all just bought pizza, it was a magical moment. Weak. I bought a homeless guy Popeye's chicken because he said he didn't want money, he was just hungry. It was nothing to write home about, not everyone pisses on everyone they see. This is what I like to hear, someone not going on about how great such acts of kindness are, but being angry at how it's seen as a rare thing when it shouldn't be. Just yesterday, we had a temporary power outage, so I grabbed my laptop and went to a coffee shop. Just a regular coffee shop in a painfully boring, white suburb. Nothing cool, nothing eccentric, no interesting people or atmosphere. Anyway, a black guy comes in, gasp, he looks a little unkempt, for the neighborhood, not in a normal sense. Anyway, he has some bags with him, one obviously from the drugstore next door, one a laptop case. He was a little peculiar, fidgety, mumbling to himself a bit, nothing extreme. So, he buys a coffee, and asks if there is a payphone nearby, of course there isnt. He then politely asks the girl if he can use their phone to make a toll free call. You can clearly see the uneasiness in her as she fumbles for the words. No, we don't have a public phone anyway. I see that he has a new prepaid phone that he needs to activate. He doesn't ask me, but I offer him the use of my phone. Upon realizing he has a laptop with him, I tell him that he can activate his phone online. About 10 minutes go by and I can see that he is having trouble. So I sit next to him and sort it out quite easily for him. He insists on buying me a pastry, and I get to talking to him, and he's a super freaking cool guy. He's been playing drums in funk and gospel bands for 30 years. He was funny as crap. We talked sports, whooped it up, had a blast. The area I was in was way out in the suburbs, a combination of uppity and redneck. I was not raised in this town, and cannot stand living around here. It felt good to, possibly, show these white bastards that, yes it is true what they have heard. Not all black people are thugs criminals trouble. We. That probably sounded ridiculous, but that really was the vibe in the place when he walked in. You could feel it. There were only about 3 single customers and 2 pairs of customers. You could totally watch the mood swing in all different directions from when he came in, started acting a bit odd, asking for a phone, to me helping him, then to the two of us being all loud and silly. At that point the mood had totally lifted, people got louder, more social, we got some smiles, the staff joined in on some conversation, it was really cool to observe. I was driving to Chipotle one time and saw a homeless dude on a corner and asked if he wanted to join me for lunch, my treat. He said he didn't want to leave, so I asked him what he'd want, and when I left I picked him up a steak burrito, drove by him on my way back and gave him his burrito. 
I was taking the bus home from work yesterday and there is always a huge crowd of people that have to get on an already packed bus. Part of this huge crowd are four high school girls dressed in very skimpy cheerleader Halloween costumes. I live in Calgary, and it's already been snowing for a week so it's dang cold out and these girls have bare legs. We got to one stop and there is a lady with a stroller who has been waiting for a bus for ages and the bus driver won't let her on because there isn't enough room on the bus. The four girls in their tiny Halloween costumes immediately volunteer to get off the bus to let her on. A few blocks down the street more people get off and the bus driver stopped the bus and asked the girls if they wanted to get back on. Made me feel real bad for judging them on their costumes. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.